Hi, I'm Vanessa. I'm one of the contributing editors here at Book Riot, and I am back this week, still sounding a little bit like Kermit the Frog, maybe. <laughs> I am feeling so much better though, like so much better, y'all. I haven't had a cough drop in two days. I haven't had to, you know, live within like a two foot radius from like a box of tissues and hand sanitizer. So I'm feeling great, even if I don't sound 100%. So anyway, bear with me because I'm sure there will be some squeaking at higher registers from time to time, but we're going to get through it together <laughs> because today I want to talk about about Spanish audiobooks. So while you could definitely just listen to any of these or most of these anyway just for sheer entertainment purposes, today I'm specifically going to be talking about Spanish audiobooks as they can be used to help or deepen your practice of the Spanish language. So first I'm going to talk a teeny bit about where you could find Spanish audiobooks, a note about the different types of Spanish, and then give a couple of quick recommendations based on what level of Spanish comprehension you are currently at. So where can you find Spanish audiobooks? More often than not, I found them, you can find them exactly where you get the rest of your audiobooks. It is so great to have apps like Audible, um, Libro, which I use, Libby, that make audiobooks just so much more accessible than they might have been once upon a time when you had to like physically get the, you know, cassette and or CD types. Hallelujah, because those are really expensive. In doing research for this, looked across multiple apps and services to see if I could find the titles that I was suggesting, and more often than not, I did find them either on all of them or maybe two out of three. Um, but anyway, there are plenty of ways that you can find them. It's a kind of up to you based on like what service you're more familiar with and which you prefer. Another one that I came across a lot in my research was one that I'd never heard of, and it's called LibriVox. And it's a cool service that appears to be kind of a collection of audiobooks, not just in Spanish, but in lots of languages. Um, and it's done, the recordings are done, I should say, on a volunteer basis. So you or I could hop onto this app and you can look it up or um, that app, it's actually just a website and you can look to see what their catalog is. It'll tell you both the books that are already available and ones that are in progress. And for any that aren't currently in the catalog, you can go and volunteer to record it. Now, I don't know enough about this site to know if somebody is reviewing the content to make sure that the files that are submitted are you know pronounced correctly and that the content is correct and all that I assume someone is doing so but anyway that might be worth taking a look into because it did look like it had a pretty wide availability and like it was free 99 which we all like I did also want to make a quick note that Spanish is going to sound different from country to country. <laughs> so if you are looking to learn a specific type of Spanish, make sure the content that you are listening to is specifically in that version of Spanish. Uh, Spain Spanish, for example, sounds completely different from the Spanish of Mexico versus the Spanish of like Venezuela or Argentina or Paraguay. Most of them are going to have a lot in common, but there are again going to be some differences in the way that words are pronounced or in like phrases that are common to each country. So they're all lovely and beautiful languages that all are, you know, great and that you should learn if you have the spare time. But if again, you're looking specifically to brush up on a specific type of Spanish, pay attention to that and the addition of the content that you are looking at. So the first type of audiobook that you can use to learn Spanish, I'm not going to spend too much time on, and that is the flat out instructional type. <laughs> the kinds that I saw most commonly and kind of like top rated on apps like Audible and Libro were one series by a company called Pimsleur and another series that's called Learning fill in the blank like crazy. So in this case, learning Spanish like crazy. They have like boxed sets and different levels that you can kind of learn and grow with. So if you are looking just for plain old instructional, you know, phrases and words and kind of a beginner and then, you know, escalated level of, of language comprehension, then go with that. It's probably not a bad place to start. And we'll make one side note, which is that I think it's super funny, although it's probably unavoidable <laughs> that, in, you know, in these types of of audio content, the way that they pronounce the Spanish just sounds super dramatic telenovela style. <laughs> so someone's asking, you know, where is the bathroom? The translator is like, ¿En dónde está el baño? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> uh, I don't know where it is. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> it's just kind of a funny side note. You obviously don't have to pronounce it that way. Just thought I'd point that out. So anyway, vaya con Dios there. <laughs> Now, the other types of content that I wanted to talk about are just flat out, you know, Spanish audiobooks, books in Spanish, and how you can use those to better your language comprehension, pronunciation, based on what level of Spanish you are at. So, for beginners, kids' books are where it's at. I definitely experienced that at the bookstore when I started working there for the first time, or folks who were coming in to learn English for the first time, uh, if they were at I should say if they were at an advanced level, they were almost always looking for classics. <laughs> and if they were at a beginner's level, we're almost always looking for kids' books. And that makes sense because kids' books are obviously going to be, you know, simple concepts, not too plot heavy, 
words and phrases that are relatively easy to grasp. So yeah, what a great place to start if you're learning that language for the first time. If you're going for Spanish audiobooks, kids books wise, I do recommend going for collections so that you're getting something a little bit meatier and not just like a four minute story. <laughs> uh, two that I found that were kind of widely recommended and that I did sample and approve of were 25 cuentos para escuchar en cinco minutos, which uh, translates to uh, 25 tales to listen to in five minutes. And then another one called cuentos para dormir, which just means like tales for sleep, sleeping, tales for bedtime. Again, they're stories that you're probably familiar with because they are just kind of like the, you know, Hans Grimm's fairy tale, Hans Christian Andersen or Grimm's fairy tales. Um, and that's an added benefit because if you're familiar with the story, then it's probably going to make learning the language a little easier since you've kind of already got, you know, a passing knowledge of the concept of that story. So that's a great place to go. Another great place to go for beginners is collections of short stories. And while you could definitely go all kinds of places there, the one that I saw recommended a few times, both by Book Ride in the past and on different sites, was one that is straight up called Spanish Short Stories for Beginners. I used that. Simple. Right there. <laughs> um, and yeah, what I like about this one is that it does seem to come with a couple of cool bonuses, uh, like extra PDF content, the ability to change the speed at which you're listening to the stories. And then at the end of every short story chunk, there was like a vocabulary recap. So lots of cool things to help you in your you know learning of the Spanish language. If you're at an intermediate level, I definitely suggest bumping it up to like middle grade books, chapter books that are going to be, you know, a bump up from like your average picture book, but that aren't so advanced in their like concept and phrase level that you're going to feel like thrown off by it. Ones that I see recommended all the time, and this is across learning all kinds of languages, is the Little Prince, which in Spanish is El Principito. Yeah, it's a story that, again, you're probably kind of familiar with, or you might be, and if you are, that might make learning, you know, or hearing it in Spanish and then picking up on that a little bit easier. Great place to start. It is obviously not quite like a middle grader chapter book, but the story is a little bit more advanced. It has like more, you know, meat and detail to it than your regular kids book. Uh, but you could also, again, just go for lots of other classics in the middle grade or even YA range. I very commonly saw suggested uh, The Wizard of Oz, which in Spanish is, I think, El Maravilloso Mago de Oz. I saw Sherlock Holmes recommended a few times, which I don't know that that falls in the middle grade category, but it was often recommended for intermediate uh, readers or, or language speakers. But so yeah, find a story that you're familiar with that you know is basic enough that you won't get too tripped over it and then listen to it in Spanish. Not a bad idea. And lastly, if you are learning Spanish or already at kind of an advanced level and just kind of want to deepen that practice, learn some new phrases and get into the thick of the language in a way that, you know, intermediate and beginning hasn't done for you yet, then go for a book that was originally written in Spanish. One of my favorites is Como Agua para Chocolate or Like Water for Chocolate. Um, this one's a great book. It's set in like Revolutionary War time Mexico. It's a lot of talk about food, about tradition, about obligations, about a, a woman who is not allowed to marry because she's the youngest daughter of this big Mexican family. And as such, she's like duty bound, you know, by tradition to take care of her mother, who's like a real mm, hija de su word, I won't say. Um, but anyway, the really great part about this book, again, it's originally published in Spanish. So you're going to come across hopefully some phrases and words that you haven't come across before, again, to like better your practice of the language. And it's available in all kinds of formats. <laughs> it's in English and Spanish, print, audio, and you can watch the movie if you want to, which I think is Spanish with English subtitles. So lots of different ways to absorb the words in that particular book. And I just think it's a really lovely story. Another one, if you're feeling real ambitious, is to go for something like Don Quixote, which is originally written in Spanish, like Spain Spanish. It is obviously a meaty sucker and one that is quite the undertaking. But again, if you're at that point where you want to take your Spanish to the next level, then, you know, read something like that that's really going to, to test your knowledge, your pronunciation, your comprehension level and teach you something you didn't already know before. I really do think Spanish audiobooks are a great, great, a great way, guys, a great way, a great way to absorb the Spanish language as with, I think, any language audio content is great. I know I can speak from personal experience when I was a kid learning English for the first time. It was one thing to learn all these concepts in, you know, in print. And then the first time I had to say the name Phoebe out loud, I was like, Bejoibe, and people looked at me kind of crazy. <laughs> Immersion is just a great way to learn a language. Audiobooks are just going to put it right there in your ears, let you hear stories and phrases that are Again, more complicated than donde está el baño. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for great Spanish audiobooks that you'd like to recommend, go ahead and leave them in the comments so that other watchers can find those suggestions. 
hopefully I'll see you next week sounding a little bit less like this. Bye.